Welcome to Exploring Computing. Today's video is Digital Music, Part 1, The Science of Sound and Recording. Before we can look at how music and sounds are stored on the computer, we need to review how sounds are actually generated and how recording actually occurs. Let's start off by assuming that we're in our classroom and the Stanford Symphony Orchestra is playing Beethoven's Fifth Symphony out in front of the class. Now, what happens when they're playing the symphony? What's happening is the various instruments are generating sound waves and those sound waves travel through the air and they reach our eardrums. And so what we perceive as music is the sound waves hitting our eardrums. Now, suppose we want to send the Stanford Symphony Orchestra home and listen to a recording of them instead. Well, what we're gonna do is we're gonna start off same as we did before, with the Stanford Symphony Orchestra playing live. And then we're gonna replace our ears with some microphones. We have a single microphone we placed in the middle of the room. That microphone picks up the sound waves as they hit the microphone. And somehow we need to store the sound wave that is generated using that microphone. We could store it on something like a magnetic tape, for example. We can store it on an old school phonograph. You know, somehow we need to store the amplitude and frequency of the wave that the symphony orchestra is playing. Now, in the case of stereo, we're gonna set up two microphones, one on the left and one on the right, and we're gonna do the same thing. The sound waves will reach the microphones at slightly different times. We go ahead and take again the magnitude and frequency of the sound wave, and we go ahead and record it. Now what we're gonna do is we send the Stanford Symphony Orchestra home, we get some speakers, and we hook them up to our recordings. And if the speakers are able to generate the exact same sound waves that the Stanford Symphony Orchestra originally created, we basically have a complete reproduction of the Stanford Symphony Orchestra's performance. We can actually take a look at what these sound waves look like using some tools that are available on the computer. What we're gonna do next is we're gonna take a look at a program called Audacity, which is going to let us take a look at these sound waves. I'm gonna play a version of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony and I'm gonna use the microphone on my computer to pick up the sound of the symphony orchestra playing. And what we're gonna see is Audacity is going to show us the wa sound waves as the music plays. <laughs> If we take the wave that we've been watching here in Audacity and we blow it up, we're going to see this. And if we blow it up even more, this is what it looks like. And so our next task is to take this wave that we're looking at right here and somehow convert it into bits and bytes so we can start in the computer. <laughs> 